Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a AS level question from paper 2, variant 23, May June 2018, question 2, based on incomplete records. The question states that Vyan is a sole trader. He started trading on 1st Feb 2016. During the year ended 31st January 2017, he did not keep detailed accounting records, but he has provided the following information. First revenue which is $248,758, carriage inwards which is $12,371, carriage outwards which is $5,873, return inwards is $6,250, return outwards is $11,875, good taken for own use is $2,246, inventory at 31st January 2017 is $27,450. Varan applies a 50% markup on cost. In the A bit of the question, we are asked to prepare the trading section of the income statement for the year at 31st January 2017. As the information provided is incomplete, we will find all the details which are required to make the trading section of the income statement in our working notes. We will start with this where it is stated that Varan applies a 50% markup on cost. What is markup? Markup is the percentage of gross profit which is applied on the cost of sales and here we don't know this cost, cost of sales. So what we will do is we will use this formula which is revenue is equals to cost of sales plus markup. Here we will take cost of sales as 100% and the markup which will be applied to this will be 50%. So our revenue will be 100% plus 50 that is 150% and here Revenue is given as $248,758. However, there is a return inward as well. What is revenue? We are talking about sales revenue here. And return inwards are the sales returns. So, this have to be subtracted to find the actual revenue. So, I have done that here. That is, I have taken $248,758. From there, I have subtracted the return inwards, which is $6,250. I got the actual revenue as $242,508. Now, we know that this is 150%. That is, our revenue, which we have said is 150%. This equal to 150%, the cost of sales which we have assumed as 100% is how much? So, to get this, we can cross multiply it. That is, we can take 248,508 times 100% divided by 150. We get the cost of sales as $161,672. You see, there are different methods which are used to calculate the cost of sales as well as the gross profit. I'm going to show you most of the common used methods so that you can use it based on your requirement because different books and different tutors follow different methods. So based on your requirement, you can follow any of this method. You see markup, as I told you previously, there's the percentage which is added on the cost of sales. And as we have already calculated the cost of sales, we will calculate the 50% of this cost of sales and this will give us the gross profit. Some books follow the other method that is as the revenue is given they find the margin. Margin is the percentage which is applied on the revenue to find the gross profit. For this they use this formula that is when markup is A by B. That is here markup is 50% and 50% can be written as 50 by 100. Then margin is equals to A divided by B plus A. That is 50 divided by 100 plus 50 which will be 150. And as this is margin it will be applied on the sales revenue. So we will take the sales revenue which is $242,508 times 50 divided by 150. We will get the same gross profit as $80,836. Or you can use this formula that is revenue is equal to cost of sales plus markup. So if you know the markup, you can take the markup to the other side. That is if you know the gross profit, you can take the gross profit to the other side and subtract it from the revenue to find the cost of sales. And if you know the cost of sales as we know here, we can take it to the other side and subtract it from the revenue to find the gross profit. So these are the various methods which can be used to find the cost of sales as well as the gross profit. Now what we are going to do is we are going to 
draw a rough draft of the trading part of the income statement to know what are the missing figures and then we can calculate those missing amounts so we'll start with the revenue which is given as $248,758 from there we will subtract the return inwards that is $6,250 we'll get the actual revenue why we are subtracting this return inwards because these are the sales return and this is sales revenue from sales revenue when we subtract the sales return we get the actual revenue which is $242,508 then from this we need to subtract all the cost of sales cost of sales consists of purchases we don't know the figure so I have mentioned A here Pur after purchases to this we are going to add the carriage inverse carriage inverse is the cost to get your purchases to the factory this is the transportation cost of purchases so we add this so A plus 12,371 will be our B then from there we will subtract return outwards return outwards are your purchase returns you have purchased the goods and you don't like some goods so you have returned it so you are going to subtract it from B you are going to subtract 11,875 dollars you will get C and then we will subtract the goods for own use these are the drawings these are not the expenses for cost of sales hence it needs to be subtracted so from C we will subtract 2246 dollars we will get D then the closing inventory closing inventory is the raw material which is left with you these are the goods which have not been sold hence they are your current assets not your expense hence we subtracted so from d when we subtract 27450 dollars we will get the cost of sales which we already know that is 161672 dollars is your cost of sales which you already know and when you subtract the cost of sales from the sales revenue you will get the gross profit which is $80,836 so we know all this now let's calculate what we don't know to calculate the missing figures I will do it in the reverse order that is here I know that D minus $27,450 is equals to the cost of sales which I have calculated which is $161,672 so I will take this here so after doing that what I will do is I will take this $27,450 to the other side I will get the value of D and I will get the value of D as $189,122 next I know this so what I will do is I will take C minus $2,246 is equals to D so when I take this I know the value of D which I will substitute here then what I'll do is I'll take this $2,246 to the other side and add it up so I'll get the value of C as $191,368 now I know this C so what I'll do is B minus $11,875 will be equal to C so I'll take this I know the value of C which I will substitute and then I'll take this $11,875 to the other side I'll get the value of B as $203,243 now I know this value of B then what I'll do is A plus $12,371 will be equal to B so I'll take this part I'll substitute the value of B and then what I'll do is I'll keep A here and I'll take this 12,371 to the other side it will become minus so I'll get the value of A which are our, our purchases as $190,872 now I know all the values of the missing figures now we will make the trading section of the income statement for the year ended 31st January 2016 we will start with the revenue which is given as $248,758 then we will subtract the return inwards which is $6,250 we will get the value as $242,508 then the purchases which was a which we calculated previously and it is $190,872 from there we will add the carriage inwards that is $12,371 which was given so we will get the total as $203,243 which will be our B value then from there we will subtract $11,875 as your return outwards and we will get the value as $191,368 which is your C value then from there we subtract the goods for own use which is $2,246 we will get $189,122 which is your value for D and then 
we subtract the closing inventory which is $27,450 we will get the cost of sales as $161,672 and when we subtract this from the actual revenue we will get the gross profit as $80,836 in the bit of the question we are asked to state two advantages of maintaining the control account you see when we talk about the accounting cycle first we will make the sales ledgers and purchase ledgers and then we make the control account if there is a segregation of the duties between the persons who make the sales and purchase ledger and the control account naturally there will be cross checking because two persons are checking the information hence there will be reduced frauds as well as there will be more accuracy and if there are any errors these errors can be located and this can be rectified apart from that you see when we make the sales ledger or the purchase ledger what we do is we make the individual accounts in the sales ledger like you see if you have five customers who are buying on credit from you then what you do is and we will name them a b c d and e so what you do is in the sales ledger you will make an individual account for a for b for c for d and for e whereas when we make the control account we make a consolidated summary of all the sales ledger so it gives us the total figure of the trade receivable that is how much you have to receive from all your credit customers and how much you have to pay to all your credit suppliers so you get this total value of trade receivable and trade payable very quickly from the control account and this will help in making the final accounts so these are the various advantages which we have when we maintain the control account Next additional information is provided which states that while preparing his accounts, Warren discovered the following goods costing Warren $2,400 have been sent to a customer on sales or return basis on 29 January 2017. The goods have been invoiced with the usual markup but the customer have not yet decided to keep them. Then second, the trade receivable was shown as $49,532. But a recoverable debt of 572 had not been written off and a provision for a recoverable debt of 5% was required. In the snippet of the question, we are asked to explain how these transactions would affect the financial statement for the year ended 31st January 2017. So, when we talk about these financial statements, there are two financial statements which will be affected that is the income statement and the statement of financial position. So, the first transaction, how it will affect the income statement, you see here the cost of goods which we have seen is, which is given is $2,400. And the markup, which is usual markup, is 50%. So, if we calculate the markup, it will be $1,200. So, what we thought is this customer have accepted the sales and hence this $2,400 plus $1,200, which will be $3,600, is taken as the sales revenue. However, this customer have not yet decided to keep the goods. Hence, this sales revenue will be reduced in the income statement. Revenue will decrease by $3,600. And this cost of goods are still your inventory. You have not sold this inventory. So, this will be the closing inventory which will be still with you. So, the inventory will increase by 2400 when you calculate the closing inventory. Apart from that, when you thought that this was sold, so you have added a markup of $1,200 and this was your profit. And as you are not earning this profit yet, hence the profit will be decreased by $1,200. When we talk about the statement of financial position, what we did is we thought these are your credit sales. Hence, you thought that this person is your trade receivable. Hence, you have increased your trade receivable by $3,600. Now, you have to decrease your trade receivable by $3,600 as the customer had not yet decided to buy these goods. And your inventory, the closing inventory again will be increased by $2,400 because this is your inventory, not your cost of sales. Then this is how the first transaction will affect. What about the second transaction? Here are the irrecoverable debts. These are your losses and expense. Hence your profit need to be reduced by $5, uh, sorry, $572. The same will be with the trade receivable because now you are not going to get this trade receivable money collected from your credit customer. 
as he has become insolvent or is not able to pay this back hence this will be reduce your trade receivable by 572 dollars then there is the provision for irrecoverable debts how we will calculate it we will take the trade receivable that is 49,532 dollars minus the irrecoverable debts which is 572 dollars we will get the trade receivable as $48,960 to this we will calculate 5% we will get the provision for irrecoverable debts as $2,448 when we make the provision for irrecoverable debts for the first time this total is considered as an expense hence this will reduce our profit the profit will decrease by $2,448 in the income statement and what about the statement of financial position in the statement of financial position the trade receivable will be decreased by $2,448 which will be the provision for a recoverable debts so overall the effect which we are going to get is this will be your answer that is the revenue will be decreased by $3,600 the inventory increases by $2,400 the profit will decrease by this this is $1,200 plus $572 plus $2,448 that will be total of $4,220 and the trade receivable will decrease by this is $3,600 plus $572 plus $2,448 so with the total will be $6,620 so this will be your answer and with this we have completed this question thanks for watching my videos and have a great life